this is going to be a, a very thought provocative video but at the same time many of you simply because of where your mindset is is going to be offended nevertheless I'm going to bring forth this truth alright all right, let's draw it here for a second okay Anglo spear Anglo spear girlfriend versus concubine Hebrew alright in this society right here it is sociably acceptable not even punishable by crime for a man be he married or not to jump from one woman to the next if he's a single man or a single woman um, they can just simply have a relationship for a while without an agreement or commitment and they can basically pleasure and please each other and anytime something comes up be it another man or another woman or one of them steps outside of the relationship uh, they get offended they break up and then they just continue to keep it in cycle going until so-called quote-unquote Mr. or Mrs. Wright shows up, all right? This is American culture. This is American society where you'll be hard-pressed today to find a virtuous woman, a, a woman um, who has actually kept herself um, and stayed a virgin until marriage. Majority of women today have had at least four to five partners um, that, and I'm speaking from the, the basic understanding in this world right here but um, while at the same time they have saw no, nothing wrong with this nothing wrong with them uh, com, you know making four or five soul ties um, the Bible says there's something greatly wrong with this and so fornication and adultery has become the norm here in this society but does that make it right no it doesn't make it right at all and somebody needs to speak to this truth right here now so in this anglo sphere the united states of america they have created a culture of this loose sex without commitment you can have boyfriend girlfriend you can have a mistress they have many different superlatives that they dress up sexual relations now let's look at the hebrew side because the truth is a, a, a woman, and that's the reason why the scriptures over and over and over again defines marriage based on and it defines judgment based on the status of the woman. Now in Hebrew culture, you know that I'm providing if you believe and you read the Holy Bible. I'm not telling or I'm not speaking to you, those of you people who believe religion. I'm talking about those who believe the Holy Scripture, the Holy Bible. Alright? Now think about this for a second. In Hebrew culture, there's either married or unmarried. Um, and then you can also throw in if you choose to be a concubine. Now, the, the fact that the matter remains, it is the truth. Um, many of the women who have been birthed and reared and born in this culture right here, you're just simply not good wife material. Now, you could be good, a good concubine. Um, and of course, that has received a negative stigma. But again, let me explain to you Hebrew culture and let's compare it to the Anglo spear of Rome here in the United States of America. No matter what in Hebrew culture, be your concubine or a wife, you have to have an agreement. That's right, an agreement. Um, I haven't found anything in the scriptures at all that, that says that you must have a contract written and, and, and drawn out. That, that seems to be Jewish tradition. And a man and woman has to be a woman of the word. See, a concubine, if she is joined to a man, be he married or single, um, she, in, in essence, she belongs to that man. And she is not to actually step out from that man. Um, she, she, she is not to uh, go around on the free market um, like they do today. Um, and, and actually lay with another man. As a matter of fact, she can't even lay with another man if she's in the status of a concubine until she is actually released from that man. Because in Hebrew culture, a woman is designed to be under authority from cradle to grave, unlike the Anglo spirit over here in the United States of America. 
So there are a lot of women out there um, that have, you know, they're just literally out there. They're literally out there um, in this world in places that they shouldn't be on the open market. And, um, and they're literally being taken advantage of because they don't know the truth and their self-esteem has done drop greatly. But a concubine is more honorable than a girlfriend. Uh, with a girlfriend, um, I mean, really it's just free prostitution, free whoredoms. With a concubine, at least you have an agreement and the status is there. At least you have a status and you have a covering. Um, and I know that this flies in the face of Christian dumb. It flies in the face of here in America. Uh, you remember Jesus said an evil and an adulterous generation will seek after a sign. But there ain't not going to be any sign given to them except the sign of Johannes the prophet. Or Yukonon the prophet. Or people say Yohan or Jonas the prophet. That's just the truth. So the, you begin to see the difference. You see a concubine while a lesser status than a wife she is still under the authority of a man and she is not um, out to be passed around amongst men on the free market because you know she has a right to pick and choose and all this old other stuff and this is the problem today the reason why a lot of women are, are mentally challenged because uh, all of these evil soul ties that have been created and uh, again um, we're all going to be judged every single one of us based on how we function in our roles here on this earth, male and female. But how can you speak a Hebrew culture when, when people carry the Hebrew Bible? It's not a Christian book. They carry the Hebrew Bible to church with them every Sunday, yet they don't believe a word in it. And when you start speaking the truth from it, the first thing you want to do is come from a, a, a mind that doesn't even know the scriptures and begin to insert their opinion. So a girlfriend is basically a whore or a whore or, or someone that's practicing legalized or I ain't even going to say legalized because there ain't even no, no law to it. Basically what they're doing is they're practicing what, what Zanu or what is commonly today called um, porneia or fornication. You know, the word fornication is the word porneia in the Greek. And, you know, while you may not be out there making X-rated movies, um, but you are actually in the same status as someone who is actually one of those women who makes X-rated films. It's just that you justify your standing, you justify your behavior uh, based upon this Anglo-colonialism sphere of Rome, American culture. And what's amazing is, is that we've been conditioned to condemn the Hebrew Israelite way when it is actually uh, regulated, sanctioned, and approved of by the Most High Yah. See, a woman, you're designed really, if, if, especially if you're a virgin. That's why the price for a virgin is a whole lot higher. A dowry, a dowry, or a bride price. A bride price is a whole lot higher than a woman that has actually got two or three children, that has had four, five, six, seven, um, uh, husbands, boyfriends, or, or, or sexual mates, partners, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and and I tell you, we are we are sincerely, um, we're falling bad because we we do not know what a righteous homestead is. We don't. And let me throw this in there: when a woman commits adultery, when she's under the authority of a man, that breaks the contract. That does. While he can choose to forgive is still solely up to him. You see, a lot of times a man's heart is challenged to be hardened based on the behavior of the woman. And, you know, women are amazing. They, they can act a fool, cut a fool, breach every contract, not function in their role, but they expect the man to stay in his role no matter what and keep his word no matter what, regardless. And even when a man says, you know, um, using the other side of the road, for instance, um, for instance, if you had a lewd behavior like this and he said, I'll tell you what, you do it again, I'm going to put you away. Um, he's actually a man of his word still because what he's doing is using the law to regulate bad behavior. Well, anyway, I know that, oh boy, I can't wait to hear what the comments are going to be on this one. 
because I know what perspective a lot of you are going to come from. But I, I'm really, truly got my ear tuned in to hearing if that's going to be a biblical perspective. Glory to the King. What saith you?